In this video, we're going to talk about mutex. Mutex is another threat synchronization mechanism that is used to help us to protect a critical section. It's very similar to a lock or a monitor that we're going to create some sort of lock around the critical section in order to protect it. But usually we don't call it a lock, we just call it mutex. And the syntax is very, very similar to a monitor and looks something like this. So first, we create a mutex. It's a little bit confusing here. By creating the mutex, we don't actually have ownership of the mutex yet. So in order to have ownership of mutex, we're going to use mutex.wait1. Once we have the ownership, the threat is going to proceed in critical section over here. And then after that, we don't forget to release the mutex. So very similar to monitor, right? In monitor, we enter the critical section and then we exit. Here, we use wait1 to acquire the mutex and then we enter into the critical section and then here, we release the mutex. So some other thread can acquire the mutex. So you may ask, if we already have monitor and works very, very similar to monitor, why we need mutex? Well, one of the distinct feature of mutex is that it can not only be used within the process, it can be also used across processes. And for that, we need to cover a, a, some basic concept of process in case that you don't know about it because at the very beginning of this course, I mentioned that we have this diagram here, we have application, and then we have threads. Okay, so I, I was using the uh, rectangle to represent a application and the, I was using the little circles to represent different threads here. So I was omitting on purpose another layer in between, which is process. So let me make that clear in this video. That first of all, we have something called application. And then within the application, we can have different processes. For example, this application have two different processes, and then each process can have one or multiple threads. So in this example, the first process only has the main thread and the second process have actually two different threads. So there's three different layers, app, process, and threads. But in terms of learning about multi-threading, it's not very important to know about that the, there could be possibility of different processes except in this particular lesson. Why we could have different processes within one application? Well, let's look at this task manager for now. So task manager, if I order by name, I can see different applications at the top. And then if you see, for example, this, there's a bracket and there's three in it. This means this application has three different processes. And then for Outlook, there's so many. And, and then for Microsoft Edge, you can see that we have 16 different processes. And the reason why we need different processes, there are different reasons. One of them is to improve the performance. For example, for this browser, modern browsers, each tab could have its own process. And then each extension has its own process. So from architecture point of view, this is going to be better separation of concerns. And from performance point of, point of view, this could be allowing the browser to utilize multiple cores of modern CPUs more efficiently. So therefore, we have to be able to deal with multiple processes within the same application, right? And with multiple processes trying to ac access the same resource, for example, a file, then although it could potentially increase the performance, it could potentially cause risk conditions in the same way as resources shared within different threads. But we can't use monitor or lock anymore because those synchronization techniques can be only used within the same process. Then we have to use particular type of synchronization technique. For example, in this case, we use mutex because mutex can be used to lock shared resources exclusively across different processes. However, the syntax is slightly different. So this syntax is actually used only for local mutex. Now you cannot use this mutex acro across different processes, but if we slightly change it, then it will be able to, we will be able to use it across different uh, processes 
And the way to do that is to have the first parameter passing as usually as false. So this is the initial ownership. We don't need to worry about this for now. Let me drag this. Okay. And then the second parameter is important. The second parameter is the name of the mutex. So you can give it a name. So when you give the mutex a name, this mutex can be shared between different processes. So for example, I can call it global file mutex, something like that. You can give it any name you want. And then nothing change over here within the using statement. Another thing you notice that we're using the using statement. This using statement is very important because we want to dispose the mutex at the end. Why we want to dispose the mutex? Because this is a resource within the operating system. It's like a file. So you want to dispose it. You don't want to leave it in the operating system. And that could lead to potentially memory leak. Now let's look at some examples. Okay, so let's take a look at our counter example. So in this synchronization overview uh, example here, we are using the increment counter. I've been using it for many, many times. Uh, and we are just basically incrementing the counter variable, which is a shared uh, resource. And we're using two threads to increase it. And there's always a possibility that uh, they're going to run into risk conditions. So the inconsistent behavior will be the result. And the counter, although expected to be 200,000, because we're using two threads doing the same thing. So when one thread finish, it will be 100,000. When two threads finish, it's supposed to be 200,000. But if we run this, it's almost always less than 200,000. You have seen that. And as soon as we use a lock to protect the resource, the result is consistent, consistently 200,000. Now, if we change this to do the same thing in two different processes, of course, we cannot use memory, we cannot use this. Uh, this is also always a memory within the process, right? So this cannot be, be the shared resource. So we can use a file to store the counter value. And then, when we increment, we first read the counter from the file. And then after we increment, we write the value back to the file. That way, the file becomes the counter, the shared resource. In each process, we just need to loop through not 100,000 times because opening and closing files take too much time. Maybe we can try 10,000 instead of 100,000. Okay, so let's give it a try and see what happens this time. So let's close this solution and try to create a new one. So again, same thing, console application, and we're going to call it mutex uh, example. And maybe making it more specific, we're going to have global mutex because local mutex is almost the same as monitor. Done at eight, long term support. Now delete the default lines here. So what are we going to do? We are going to create a file path and I'm going to just call it counter dot. So it's going to be a text file. Now I'm going to loop through uh, a index for how long, how many 10,000 times. And each time I'm going to get the counter out from the file. I'm going to say read counter which is a function I'm going to create later. So I pass in the file path, right? And then now I'm going to increase it. So this is, I'm writing everything without any thread synchronization mechanism. And I want to see what happens if I run it. Right? So then I'm going to call write counter, write back to the same file and with the same file, uh, file path and the counter value has to be in the parameter. Okay. Now at the end, I'm going to say console.write line and I'm going to say process finished. And then I'm going to have a console.read line just so that we don't accidentally go out of this, finish this. Now we can implement the read counter and write counter. I don't want to implement it by just writing every single letter. I have prepared the, the code already for you and we can go through that when I paste it over here. All right. 
So this is not a I/O or basic C# -sharp course. That's why I just pasted it over here. So we basically have a read counter and write counter function implemented, and we have the file stream, and we are opening. We allow different processes to open at the same time because file share is read and write, right? And then we open the uh, the stream and read the content, and then parse the content. Same over here with writer content. We have the file stream and then we create a stream writer. So this one is stream reader. This is stream writer. And then we write the counter value back to the file. Okay. So if I run it, basically let me build it first. Remember the file mode here is open or create. So if it doesn't exist, it's going to create. If it does exist, then it's going to just open an existing file. So let me go to the file explorer here, and now let's go to bin debug thunder eight. Now I have this global mutex example, and I don't have the counter.txt file in the folder yet. If I run it now, it's going to take a while because we're opening and closing the file all the time, right? Closing and opening the file all the time. Now it's finished. So it's about ten seconds to finish. And the result is ten thousand, so that's expected. So now, what if I run? So let me let me delete this first. What if I run two different instances of the same application, which means two processes are running separately, and then I open up again. So you can see that two processes are running, and they're write, reading and writing to the same counter file. Each one would do it for ten thousand times. The expected result is twenty thousand, right? But Moment of truth. Let's open the counter file. You can see it's way less than twenty thousand. And why? Well, it's the same reason that we have seen before within the, the same uh, within the same process, right? When we have two different threads running, we we experience the same the same situation. Now again, if I delete it and run it again, so the, the result will be different, but it will be always less than. Two hundred thousand. Let's wait for about ten seconds, maybe a little bit more than ten seconds, because we're trying to open the file and closing the file at the same time. Okay, the, the application finish, and let's open. Now this time, it's even less. Now the reason why is that because the file itself is a shared resource, and accessing the shared resource from two different processes simultaneously will cause risk conditions and inconsistent behaviors. Therefore. We need to apply some kind of synchronization mechanism. Using monitor wouldn't work. Using lock wouldn't work. Let's actually try that. Okay. So let's say I'm gonna just use a lock to protect it. So we're reading and writing. So all of these should be a critical section. And let me declare it. So I'm gonna say file lock object. Now I'm gonna just lock the file. Okay. Lock the critical section. And let me build it again and go over here. So I'm gonna delete the counter file for now, and let me run it and run it again. Let's wait for a while. It's gonna be about ten seconds. First one finished, second one finished, and let's close the processes and go to the counter. Now you can see that it's still less than two hundred thousand. This time it's even less. So let me close these. That means the lock doesn't work. And of course, we don't need to try monitor because lock is monitor. I explained before. So let me delete this line and let's try to implement mutex. So let me delete this as well because it doesn't really work. And I'm gonna do a Control K F to format it, but I'm gonna comment it out for now. So what are we going to do? We're gonna use using statement. Remember. You have to use a using statement in order to make sure that it's disposed. The 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 mutex is always disposed. And then we go to go mutex, and you can see that there's uh, different signatures. We're gonna use the the third one. But you can rate this initial initially owned. So if it's true, then it gives the calling thread initial ownership. We don't need initial ownership. That's why I'm gonna use false, and then. The second one is the name of the mutex. I'm gonna just call it global file mutex, and、uh, 
in order to make a difference, perhaps I'm going to just add the file name here in case some other people also create a mutex with the same name here, right? Because it's going to use across the operating system. So that's why I need to add the file name here just to make sure it's always unique. And then within the using body here, I'm going to loop. So I'm going to just copy this and paste it over here and and comment it. So I'm going to loop for again, 10,000 times, but Remember, this is the critical section. So before we enter the critical section, we need to require the mutex. And then we're going to try over critical section. So finally, we need to release the mutex. Don't forget to do that. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. All right. Now we have this mutex protecting us. I want to emphasize again, as soon as you give the mutex a name, this mutex, mutex becomes global across all of the processes. So this mutex now can protect shared resource across different processes. And let's give it a try. Let's first build the solution and now go to the folder, delete the counter again, and let's run application twice. All right. So we have two processes running at the same time. And let's wait and see what's going to happen. It's going to take a while again. And thank you for waiting, but it's going to work it. Now you can see actually it's taking a little bit longer because it's really kind of open and close at different times now. And it's finished. And let's go to counter and we see 20,000. This is the expected result. No matter how many times you run it, you're going to have the same thing. Let's delete the counter.txt. And just try it again. So this time I can try for three different instances and I expect to see 30,000. So if it works, it's going to be 30,000 instead of 10,000 or 20,000 or any number in between. So let's wait for a little bit more time and then we're going to see the result. The first one finished. Now the second one finished. Third one also finished. Let's close the processes window and go to counter.txt and we see 30,000. That means our mutex is indeed protecting the critical section across different processes. One more thing I want to talk about before I finish this video is that if you have a choice between using mutex and using monitor or lock, so how can you choose between these techniques? I would say that if you want to use a lock to protect resources within a process, then always prefer either lock or a monitor over a mutex because mutex is considered as a operating system wide resource. It actually takes more resource to create a mutex than to create a lock or a monitor. Unless you're trying to synchronize between different processes, don't use mutex. Prefer lock or monitor. And that's everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.